Okay, so um, let's look at this question. It says you can determine the index or refraction of a substance by determining its critical angle. Sure, you can. Um, so the scenario that you are thinking through is something like this. Your textbook, I think it does the derivation, you can, which you can totally use. Um, you know, this question doesn't require you to drive it. So imagine um, you have a medium. So let's say um, it, this is the medium with the index or refraction that, uh, oh, and we are going to be using water. So let's let me just call this N1 and call this N2. And for total internal reflection to happen, N1 has to be higher than N2. And let's imagine around this surface normal, by which we mean something that's perpendicular to the surface, there, there's some light coming in, striking the surface. It's going to get refracted through. And when you look at Snell's law and what it says, Snell's law says that uh, index of refraction times the sine of the angle on that side is equal to index of refraction times sine of the angle um, theta 2 on the other side. So if you have a condition where n1 is greater than n2, in order for this equality to hold, what must be the case is the sine of theta 1 must be smaller than sine of theta 2. Or in other words, theta 2 must be greater than theta 1. And what that means, this light ray, as it refracts through, it refracts in such a way that it refracts away from the surface normal. Um, so oops, I drew theta 2 in the wrong spot. Uh, so, so, so that when you look at this uh, theta 2, this theta 2 will be greater than theta 1. And you can imagine varying this angle or varying the indexes of refractions. How much can I get this to, uh, outgoing light rate to bend? The most extreme case you would have is basically where it's going along the surface. So where this theta 2 is 90 degrees. And that is the situation we, where we call this angle here is the critical angle. That's the smallest angle which will cause uh, basically refracted light ray to disappear. And refracted light ray disappearing makes it so that this reflected light has 100% of the intensity from energy conservation considerations. So, so this is the scenario that you're imagining. And once you have that, that allows you to derive uh, expression for critical angle. So, um, so I'm applying Snow's law just with the angles that we are given. So with that, this is what I can say. Uh, N1, uh, yeah, we'll leave that as N1 times the sine of the critical angle is equal to N2. We'll leave that there. It might be different from 1 times now sine of theta 2. That's definitely going to be 1. one. So the critical angle. Uh, so th that's an expression. I guess uh, let me leave that there. Uh, the relationship for critical angle. I'm not solving for critical angle because I'm uh, glancing over at the questions and I'm realizing, oh, they are giving us the critical angle. So they don't want us to solve for critical angle. What do they want? They, they want the index of refraction. Okay. So to get that answer, now we solve this for index of refraction. Um, so submerged in water, so they are giving index of refraction of the outside. We are wanting the index of refraction of the inside. So we would say, okay, uh, N1 is equal to N2 divided by sine of the critical angle. Okay, I think that's an easy calculation to do. Let me do that in Wolfram Alpha. So we have N2, uh, index of refraction of water. I happen to have it memorized, so I'm just going to use it. Index of refraction of water is 1.33 like within 1% accuracy. That divided by sine of the critical angle, 66.10 degrees. That's going to give us what the index of refraction must be, uh, 1.455. Uh, so it is greater than index of refraction in water, as the condition was. and uh, But it's not that much greater. Huh? 1.455. 1.455. Okay, so having measure the index of refraction 
then we are trying to figure out, oh, so what is it? Uh, we are linked to table 1.1. I'm pretty sure that is the table that I already have on this tab, uh, the, the index or refraction table. So let's go through that. So we are looking for something that has index or refraction of 1.455. So let's keep scrolling. Okay, this could be it. Close. Now carbon tetrachloride, I don't think that's on the list. So all right, keep going. 473. Glyceride, not in the list. 434. Uh, fluoride? Oh, you know, it could be fluoride. Maybe. Um, let's see if there's something closer. Uh, uh, fluoride might be a good fit, if nothing else. Uh, 458. Fused to quartz. Oh, that is pretty close. That's within like uh, less than a percent. So I'm pretty sure that would be the answer. Let me just scroll through the rest of the list to, to see there's something that's not closer. Yeah, there's nothing closer. So yeah, fused to quartz is probably it. So with the fused to quartz, then, uh, you know, we can use either, like either this or the index or refraction that's here, 1.458. They're both close enough that either would give the same answer. So now it's asking what would be the critical angle before this substance in air? Now we are saying N2, which previously we weren't allowed to set equal to 1. Now we are saying this is equal to 1. And solve this, this time, this second time, instead of for critical angle. So theta critical would be okay. The right hand side, 1 divided by N1, and then arc sine. So it'll be uh, arc sine of 1, because N2 is now 1, divided by N1. And we have N1 from my pre our previous answer, 1.455. So, um, so we can do R cosine of 1 over divided by 1.455. And there are ways to do this calculation more exactly. I think this is good enough. Let's see, do they, okay, give us an answer in degrees. So 43.42 degrees. 43.42 degrees. Yeah, it's uh, a lot smaller than the angle um, in water. Good? Um, yeah, so that's that.